Well, good morning and a very warm welcome to Dundonald Parish Church on this, the first Sunday of Advent. Can you believe it? Time is marching on, but it is wonderful to have you all with us this Sunday. If you're visiting us for the first time, then you are warmly welcome. And if you don't know who I am, my name is Lindsay Brennan. Just before we start our worship together, just a couple of intimations for you. I told you last week that we are collecting uh, Christmas gifts for children for the Night Before Christmas charity, which is a local charity based in the southwest of Scotland. They provide Christmas gifts to children living in or at risk of poverty within our local area. So if you wanted to hand in a children's gift for all ages um, or pyjamas, there's going to be a box in the porch that you can just put your gift into or you can hand in your gift to the Castle Visitor Centre when they are open. It would be helpful if we could have the gifts by Monday the 7th of December, just to help the charity with their administration and the extra time that it will take due to the coronavirus. Also to remind you that we are doing something very special as a community this Christmas, and that is creating a wall of star-filled joy. Now in the manse porch, it's a busy porch, there's also a box of wooden stars. I'll encourage you to pick up your own star. We want you to decorate it in any way that you want, but to write on the back your reason for joy this season. So what are you thankful for even in this current situation? We're going to collect all the stars back in, we're going to varnish them, and we're going to be displaying them on the gates outside the church in a wonderful art installation, which basically expresses our joy as a community in Dundonald, despite everything that is going on. We just hope to lift people's spirits uh, this Christmas. The other really exciting thing that we've managed to, to do, with thanks to Urban BFM, is that we know as a church we can't open our doors like we want to for the Christmas Eve service, which is very popular in the community, where we can all get together and sing Christmas carols. We can't do that because we're not allowed big groups gathering inside or outside. But instead, we're going to do something called carols on the doorstep. Now, this involves you going on your doorstep, wearing your best Christmas jumper and your best party hat, pitching on your radio to Irvin B FM at a certain time and date, we'll tell you when that is, and we're going to be singing three Christmas carols together. So something you can join in with your neighbours and it will just be a wonderful thing to do to, again, lift Christmas spirits and to celebrate uh, Christmas that is coming and the amazing news of the birth of Jesus Christ. So tune in to find out a little bit more about that. We'll be intimating and advertising it on our Facebook page. Finally, we have an anniversary, a different anniversary this week to celebrate. It has been one year since Bob Stewart, our session clerk, took on his post and one year since he agreed to um, step up to eldership role within the Church of Scotland. So we want to say a big um, happy first anniversary to our faithful session clerk, Bob Stewart. Just to let you know, your, your church family are just so appreciative of your role, but especially all the extra jobs that you have been doing in this coronavirus year. You have totally stepped up um, and helped us with our online services. You are the person that edits all our services together and without your faithful service, we wouldn't have such an accessible online service. So Bob, we've got this for you. We know you like your presents. So if you pop into the manse, pop into the manse, pop in, pop in, pop into the manse, or when I next see you, you've got a little gift from your church. But let's now have a call to worship. Even if we cannot gather in person, Emmanuel, God with us. Even if some Christmas traditions have had to go, Emmanuel, God with us. Even if we might not get a hug from family and friends this Christmas, Emmanuel, God with us. Even if we cannot sing carols beside each other in church, Emmanuel, God with us. Even if Christmas cheer is harder this year, Emmanuel, God with us. Well, in this Advent season of expectation and anticipation, 
we prepare to welcome Christ Jesus, our Messiah, and we're going to sing our first hymn of Advent. O come, O come, Emmanuel. approach God together in prayer. Holy Light, God of faithful witness, please shine in our hearts with all the joy of your coming Son. May we be delivered from trusting the artificial lights of our generation so we can recognise the true light of Christ. Lord God, we praise you for sending light into this world. We confess that we live as though the light has never defeated darkness. We confess that we ignore the Saviour you sent to be among us and to live in us. We've kept the birth of your Son confined to the Christmas season and do not yearn for his coming each moment in our waiting hearts. Forgive us for not fully turning to Jesus. Prepare us for his return. Help us rejoice in the light so that your grace can illuminate the darkened places of our hearts. 
in this Advent season of expectation, draw us together in unity, even though we are to remain apart. And may our worship echo through our lives and radiate into the lives of others, drawing them to your name. In this Advent of expectation, draw us together in mission, that the hope within might be the song we sing and the melody of our lives. In this advent of expectation, draw us together in service. Help us to radiate the smile of Jesus and warm the hearts of others. And hear us now as we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now it is the first Sunday of Advent, and on the first Sunday of Advent, we light the first candle on our Advent wreath. Now, unfortunately, we haven't got our wreath um, here for this Sunday. It will be back, it will be with us next Sunday. Um, but I'm going to light a candle just now. So gathered here today, we light a candle of hope, knowing that in dark times, there is always a light that can be lit. As I light this candle, remind us, Jesus, that you are warm and loving, that you call us to live in your light. Smile upon us, Jesus. Our Bible will be read this morning by Avon King. A prayer for the nation's restoration. Listen to us, O shepherd of Israel. Hear us, leader of your flock. Seated on your throne above the winged creatures, reveal yourself to the tribes of Ephraim, Benjamin, Manasseh. Show us your strength. Come and save us. Bring us back, O God. Show us your mercy, and we will be saved. How much longer, Lord God Almighty, will you be angry with your people's prayers? You have given us sorrow to eat, a large cup of tears to drink. You let the surrounding nations fight over our land. Our enemies insult us. Bring us back, almighty God. Show us your mercy, and we will be saved. You brought a grapevine out of Egypt. You drove out other nations and planted it in their land. You cleared a space for it to grow. Its roots went deep, and it spread out over the whole land. It covered the hills with its shade. Its branches overshadowed the giant cedars. It extended its branches to the Mediterranean Sea and as far as the river Euphrates. Why did you break down the fences round it? Now anyone passing by can steal its grapes. Wild pigs trample it down and wild animals feed on it. Turn to us, almighty God. Look down from heaven at us. Come and save your people. Come and save this grapevine that you planted, this young vine you made grow so strong. Our enemies have set it on fire and cut it down. Look at them in anger and destroy them. Preserve and protect the people you have chosen, the nation you made so strong. We will never turn away from you again. Keep us alive, and we will praise you. Bring us back, Lord God Almighty. Show us your mercy, and we will be saved. Amen.
Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. So today is the first Sunday of Advent, the first day of the new church year. So maybe we can say Happy New Year, everyone. I'm sure a lot of people aren't too bothered about saying goodbye to 2020. Well, despite popular belief, Advent isn't just about counting the days down to Christmas and eating all the chocolate out our Advent calendars. And I'm telling you, in my house, the chocolate is gone well before Christmas. Advent includes the four Sundays preceding Christmas. And Advent means coming. And the weeks of Advent focus on the church's anticipation of the birth of the Messiah, Jesus, as well as the future coming of Christ. But what often happens is that Christmas is rolled into Advent and all of Advent is treated as though it were Christmas. But it's important we don't do this, but instead we stop and we wait in anticipation, rush ahead and we may miss the message that God wants us to hear at this time. Well, for the last couple of weeks, we've been reflecting on the Psalms and it's appropriate that today our psalm is Psalm 80. And it is a psalm that is often read in the Advent period. And its theme is one of waiting in hopeful anticipation for revival. As we enter Advent, let us too wait in hopeful anticipation that we may see God even in the unexpected and be revived in our faith. Well, Psalm 80 is a prayer a lament of the people of God who are crying out to God together. They are waiting for God in real desperation for revival and restoration after experiencing destruction and exile. And the worshipping community are really crying out to God to recognise that they actually exist. And this psalm teaches us a lot about how we too can seek God in all circumstances. How do we seek God even when life is difficult? And even if we believe that God could be the cause of our present reality. In Psalm 80, we hear these cries. Awaken your might, come and save us, restore us, make your face shine on us. The people in this Psalm think that God has wrongly distanced himself from them and they are not, and he is not responding to their prayers. But what is just amazing is as they complain about God, they also simultaneously pray to him. In this Psalm, the people are reminding God of his promises to them and asking, well, where are you? God is their shepherd king and they are his sheep. So why isn't he coming through for them? Listen to us, O shepherd of Israel, hear us, leader of your flock, seated on your throne above the winged creatures. Reveal yourself to the tribes of Ephraim, Benjamin and Manasseh. Show us your strength. Come and save us. Goodness, you couldn't get more direct than that. They aren't hiding their feelings one bit from God. Have you ever cried out to God with such raw honesty like this prayer of lament? Listen again to the words we hear repeated three times in verse 3, 7 and 19. Bring us back, O God, show us your mercy and we will be saved. Bring us back, almighty God, show us your mercy and we will be saved. Bring us back, Lord God Almighty. Show us your mercy and we will be saved. A simple, clear plea that God would release them from their present suffering and restore them to better circumstances. But also what we are hearing is their cry for renewal or revival. The second half of verse 18 says this, Give us life that we may call upon your name. Or in another translation, revive us and we will call on your name. Revive us. 
Well, this makes me think of times of great spiritual power in the history of the church, when the Holy Spirit seemed to work in a special way among God's people. I'm thinking especially about that amazing revival that happened about 70 years ago in the Hebrides. And I'm reading a wonderful book about revival on the Isle of Lewis called Sounds from Heaven. It is an amazing read and I really would recommend it. Well, revivals often led God's people to share their faith with their neighbours so that new people came to faith in Jesus. But the revivals didn't usually start there. They started with a reawakening of faith in the hearts and lives of Christian people. It's all about the sovereign work of God's Holy Spirit that comes to and through us through Jesus. Well, what I'm reading about in this book is that the Spirit of God moved in such a force in the Isle of Lewis that hundreds of, hundreds of people came willingly to church, sometimes even walking through snowstorms and rain to get there. And they were desperate to hear the word of God. And the conviction of God's spirit forced many people to their knees in repentance. In Advent, as we wait in preparation and anticipation for Jesus, we wait with the openness and possibility that our faith may be reawakened in powerful ways. Restore us and we may be called on your name. Three times the writer in this psalm also calls to God to restore us or to bring us back. But before God's restoration can happen in any of us, there always needs to be repentance, a turning away from sin and those things that we know aren't right in our lives. Repentance involves humbling ourselves and turning to God to receive his forgiveness through Jesus. Whatever difficulties we are facing in life, turning to God is always the solution. But the good news is we don't need to do this all on our own strength. This psalm acknowledges that we can't do this alone and we need God's help. The psalmist cries out, make us to turn, O God. This isn't a cop-out. It it's not asking God to do something that we should be doing ourselves. It's a humble acknowledgement that if we want to change our lives, our human strength is not up to the job. We need to come to God in desperation and faith and cry out for God's help. And we can cry out to God using the prayer from this psalm. Restore me, O God, make your face shine upon me, that I may be saved. This psalm is calling us to prayer and to pray in real honesty, no matter what the brokenness is. Are you afraid to tell God how you really feel? Well, the psalms encourage us not to be afraid? Are you wondering if your little troubles aren't important enough to pray about? The Psalms encourage us to pray about everything and the Psalms speak for us when we can't find the words to speak ourselves. The Psalms really are a prayer book of the people of God and we can use them as prayers and also as models for prayer. And this psalm is calling us to pray, to pray not just as individuals, but as a community of faith and to pray in all circumstances. We too should pray as desperate people who realise that life is often too much for us, especially in this pandemic, and that we need God's help. God has restored and revived his people in the past and he can do it again today. We belong to a family, a family of faith, and have other people around us who will pray with us and for us. So please do keep praying despite your circumstances. 
Well, my favourite verse in this whole psalm is verse 3, which is repeated again in verse 19. Make your face shine upon us that we may be saved. Or as the message translation puts it, smile your blessing smile that will be our salvation. Advent is a time to be more faithful in prayer and to be more intentional about turning to God. But it's also a time to look to Jesus. He's the human face of God. In him, God has shown the light of his countenance to us. He's made his face shine on us. We've seen the smile of God in Jesus. This Advent, let's look to Jesus and may his face shine on us. Let us pray. Restore us, O God. Make your face shine upon us that we may be saved. Smile your blessing smile on us today. Amen. Our prayers of intercession come this morning from Stephen Brennan. Let us pray. Father God, we pray for our world in this continuing coronavirus pandemic. We pray especially for those who are struggling with the newly imposed restrictions, which prevent us from seeing our family and friends as often as we would like. We ask that you would comfort them. We pray for those who are suffering the symptoms of the virus, both during infection or through longer term effects. Bring them healing and strength. We give thanks for the positive news about vaccines that has emerged in the past few weeks and pray for scientists and volunteers who are involved in the continuing trials of these and other vaccines. We pray also for the health workers who will be involved in distributing the vaccine. Give wisdom and guidance to our politicians and to health officials as they decide on any possible easing of restrictions over the Christmas period. We know how important it can be for mental health and well-being for families to be together at this time, but it is vital that this is done without causing a resurgence of infections. During this pandemic, it is easy to forget the other issues that continue to affect our world. Today, we want to remember just one of those and bring before you the country of Ethiopia, which has been blighted by terrible swarms of locusts both last year and this year. Climate change has made conditions more favorable for the locusts, which destroy vast areas of crops and pasture. Now, efforts to control the locusts are being threatened by the outbreak of war in the north of the country, as supply routes for emergency food are blocked, insecticide praying, spraying has had to stop, and young men who are helping to fight the insects are being mobilized to fight each other. We pray that you would bring peace and stability to the region to allow the control of the locusts to continue. We pray for Christian Aid and other humanitarian organisations as they work, work to bring food assistance to the area. We also continue to pray for the efforts to prevent climate change, which requires a response from all of us around the world. All these things we ask in and through the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. We heard in our psalm, Restore us, O God, make your face shine on us, that we may be saved. It's fitting then that we close our service of worship this morning with the hymn, May the Lord bless you, may the Lord keep you, may the Lord make his face to shine upon you. Let's sing this blessing along with Stephen now.
The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen.